me and for the cabinet secretary for MIT. MIT is actually Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry, Honorable Salim Vuria, who is out of the country. So, Your Excellency, allow me to commence these brief remarks by once more joining all who have spoken to commend the government of Kisumu County and African Bank for co-hosting the fourth series of Africa uh, Sub-Sovereign sub -sovereign Network Conference. The Africa Sub-Sovereign Con Network Conference was launched by the African Export-Import Bank, what is known as Afrexim Bank, during an inaugural conference held on the sidelines of the Intra-African Trade Fair in 2021 with the mission of promoting peer learning, cooperation and collaboration among, so uh, among sovereign governments. The invaluable impact of peer learning is well recognized. Varied stakeholders bring with them a wealth of knowledge, skills and resources that can be customized for the good of communities. Development often represents, in among others, the realization or revitalization of areas and of infrastructure. If government officials collaborate with the local business owners and community organizations to pool resources to find initiatives like infrastructure improvement of an area, beautification or greening projects, then each can contribute their specific and unique, unique expertise, be it design, policy making or other expertise to ensure success of projects. It is an excellent opportunity that this conference is co-hosted by Afrexim Bank. This is because in the more recent past, Afrexim Bank has shown its commitment to Kenya's development agenda through the three-year country, country program aimed at boosting, boosting our economic recovery. The three-year country program seeks to leverage on three billion U.S. dollars facility to support trade and investments in Kenya's public and private sectors through loans, guarantees, facilities, trade services, investment banking, and advisory services. Also of note and worth emphasizing is the fact that Afrexim Bank is further actively involved in deepening and expansion of the banking industry in Kenya by expanding its lines of credit and other products uh, offerings to Kenyan banks to equip them with the muscle to support the local economy. Your Excellency, when we talk economy and development, there is really no agency in reinventing the wheel when it comes to Africa's development agenda. Agenda 2063 encapsulates not only Africa's aspiration for the future, but also identifies key flagship programs which can boost Africa's economic growth and development and lead to the rapid transformation of the continent. The networking and learning opportunities presented through this conference series possess potential to bring forward practical and unique policy concepts that cannot be underplayed and it is my anticipation that this opportunity will see the emergence of viable economic initiatives that will see the Kenyan economy grow in line with the bottom-up economic agenda principle, through which the government intends to continue to collaborate with the stakeholders, including the private sector, to realize projected growth. The need for innovative approaches outside the traditionally accepted lines to promote development finds a comfortable home in the choice of them by Afrexim Bank and County Government of Kisumu for this year's fourth edition of the Africa Sub-Sovereign Network Conference, which is leveraging the African continental free trade area for sustainable trade and investment, a development pathway for African, Africa Sub-Sovereign. So trade across the region must thrive and Afrexim Bank is one of the better placed institutions to guide this. Since she has acquired considerable experience in successfully intervening and supporting its member states facing both short, medium and long-term socio-economic challenges and crisis, and supporting those member countries going through major macroeconomic negative shocks. Kenya was among the first African countries that signed the African Continental Free Trade Area Treaty in Kigali, Rwanda on March 21st, 2018, marking a historic milestone in the economic integration push of the continent. 
The formation of a free trade area spanning the continent creates a single market of over 1.3 billion people with a combined gross domestic product of more than 3.4 trillion US dollars. Your Excellency, the move by Kenya to join the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System initiatives as an enabler for the African continental free trade area is a major milestone as it, it presents the Kenyan firms with the ability to execute all trades and financial transactions seamlessly with other firms in the rest of Africa. Correspondingly, the move by the Afrexim Bank to establish the adjustment fund is also laudable. The United States dollars of 10 billion funds will support countries, Kenya included, to effectively participate in the African continental free trade area. As a major shareholder of the bank, Kenya is expected to continue to tap the opportunities offered by the bank through the adjustment fund. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, some research suggests that people with a fixed mindset tend to approach goals more passively. A growth mindset of opportunities and entrepreneurial mindsets. It means not seeing hurdles, but instead seeing how to overcome the hurdles. This conference provides that opportunity, and I hope we will each grasp it. Allow me, Your Excellency, before I invite you to address the conference, to just mention two more things. Your Excellency, I also want to share with the sentiments of Professor Peter Nyangyo, the Governor of Kisumu, and also with the President and Chairman of the Board of our Flexing Bank, Professor Orama, on the issue of the challenge that, is, that this country is facing, and not just Kenya, but across the region, that is of unemployment. This is urgent and must be addressed. It is the most critical challenge that we are facing as a nation. And therefore, Your Excellency, in that breath, as we get support from Afrexim Bank, and I'm happy and delighted that the Afrexim Bank is ready and willing to support our special economic zones and industrial parks. <laughs> Your Excellency, allow me to disclose that last week, exactly the same day, it is only the hour which is different, it was at night, that you instructed me, Your Excellency, uh, to make specific provision in the next budget and to support the special economic zone, especially the one in Kisumu, Kibos. I want to guarantee Your Excellency that your instructions will be executed. And with this possible support from Flexing Bank, I'm even more encouraged that we'll get funding for our special economic zones and industrial parks, not just Kibos alone, but Your Excellency, there are other counties as well, including my own, my own home county of Homer Bay, where we also have the Riwa Industrial Park or Special Economic Zone. Finally, Your Excellency, allow me to mention something. And I can hear uh, uh, Governor Orengo also shouting, what about CIA? <laughs> and by extension, what about Bungoma, because Lusaka is as well, is also here. But finally, Your Excellency, when you graciously offered me this position that I'm occupying today of uh, Cabinet Secretary in charge of National Treasury and Economic Planning, we had a meeting with you and uh, we mutually agreed that we must support devolution. And um, both of us are actually students of devolution. Remember, we have pushed devolution together even when we were together with you in ODM. Today we are again together in broad-based government. <laughs> so we agreed that we will make sure that uh, devolution is supported and supported fully with action, not just by words. Even though we had challenges of how much to give the counties, but that I think has now been settled at 387 billion shillings, which both houses of parliaments have agreed on. We have endeavored, Your Excellency, and I don't think I've disappointed you, in making sure that counties receive their funding timelessly. I want to just uh, make it clear, Your Excellency, that yes, we crossed over 2023-24, with one month arrears to pay under uh, shareable revenue to counties. 
30.8 billion. And that amount was actually paid on 27th of July 2024. Now for this financial year, Your Excellency, we had a little bit of a challenge because of the legal framework. But again, we both agreed that uh, we get the opinion of the Attorney General, and which we got. I sought the opinion and we got. And immediately I got that opinion. On 24th of September 2024, we made transfer of 32.76 billion to the county government for the month of July. And then on 17th of October 2024, we transferred 30.8 billion to the counties for the month of August. And then on 14th of November 2024, we made a transfer of 32.7 billion for the month of September. And less than a week later, on 18th, which is Monday of November 2024, we transferred 30.8 billion for the month of October. So, Your Excellency, as far as the national government is concerned, we don't have any arrears to counties, but something needs to be uh, worked on. That is the control of budget and how uh, that office can facilitate uh, funds to leave the county revenue funds to the county governments. I think that needs to be dealt with urgently, and I'm sure uh, the Deputy President will deal with that. We need to convene a meeting and see how to smoothen that process. Otherwise, Your Excellency, allow me at this juncture and uh, um, my fellow participants kindly be upstanding as we welcome the President of the Republic of Kenya to come and address the gathering. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Um, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you very much. You can take your seats. Sante Sana. Allow me to take this opportunity on behalf of the government and people of